This video is about endospore germination. So endospores have a thick protein coat. They are ejected from the vegetative cell and you can see that over here. So the vegetative cell is going to die. So for um, stimulation reasons like lack of food, antibiotic treatment, or the presence of oxygen, then the endospore will be germinate or sorry, will be sporulated. And out it comes with this thick protein coat. All um, it contains inside of it is DNA and ribosomes and enzymes that help to stabilize the DNA and then some enzymes that are involved in the germination process. So this thing is tough, tough as nails. It um, can survive dormant for indefinitely. We have found these in Egyptian tombs and they, under the right conditions, can germinate. We have found them in fossils inside of bees guts and they still germinate. So they are able to survive most definitely for thousands of years. And we think this is basically because the protein coat is, is so impervious to any kind of um, air or fluids or chemicals and this protects the DNA. We also think that there are enzymes that help to stabilize the DNA so UV radiation doesn't hurt it. And then there are even enzymes that if the DNA is damaged that it can repair itself and then germinate. So it is um, going to be resistant to heat. This is why with foodborne illnesses like Bacillus cereus or Clostridium perfringens, the endospores can survive the heating um, and then be able to germinate in the food. So if you do want to destroy them with heat, then you'd have to boil them for about 20 minutes. Modern techniques include autoclaving, which is hotter than boiling because it's a steam. And then I was reading that some hospitals use like a, a hydrogen peroxide vapor in a sterilizer. So these would be how to destroy. And then 10% bleach. And if you leave it on there for about 15 minutes, then that can destroy endospores. So yeah, they're pretty hardy. Um, and the antibiotics, of course, are going to be, uh, I want to put that on here, they're going to be resistant, or antibiotics just will be ineffective. And I think you can probably think about why, if you think about how do antibiotics work. Well, they work by inhibiting cell wall formation. Well, these endospores aren't trying to form cell walls, so that's going to be ineffective. They work by inhibiting protein synthesis. Well, these aren't um, doing any protein synthesis when they're dormant. So any method that a antibiotic uses is going to be effective only against a metabolically active organism, and an endospore is dormant. So antibiotics are therefore ineffective. Okay, so then what's going to cause the germination over here? is a return to favorable conditions. So if stress stimulates sporulation, then um, good conditions stimulate germination. And favorable conditions are generally going to be um, warm and food rich.
One thing that I thought was interesting in my reading is that the germination of an endospore uh, may be triggered by um, cracks in the protein coat. We're not sure what causes the cracks. It might be heat, which is a little bit of a catch-22, right? Because we just said that they're resistant to heat, but it could be that the heat then could actually cause them to germinate more quickly than they otherwise would have. I'm speculating a little bit here, but I find that intriguing to think how our very treatments of endospores, if they don't work, could actually make the endospores germinate sooner. But I am speculating there. Um, okay, but back to what we do think about germination is if there are cracks in the coat of the endospore, then water and moisture can come in. And if there are, is food around, now we're going to be able to have a germination back to a vegetative cell. All right, so just a, a kind of an overview of what we talked about in the last two videos. So endospores are formed by bacillus and clostridium. Those are the medically significant genre. The little endospores form in different parts of species, and those lo the location that the endospore forms is characteristic of a species and can be helpful in identification. Endospores only contain the DNA, ribosomes, and substances that will stabilize the DNA or are necessary for germination to get going later on. Sporulation is stimulated by stress, particularly a lack of food, antibiotic treatment, or the presence of oxygen. Once the endospore is formed, it's ejected from the vegetative cell. The vegetative cell dies and the endospore can remain dormant until favorable conditions occur again. Medically significant things I'd like to mention here, C. diff. Let's make a little list over here. So C. diff endospores can result in repeated infections. So if someone is treated with antibiotics, then the endospores germinate, it comes back, then they're treated, then the endospores germinate. So because of this, antibiotic treatment is sometimes prescribed in a pulsing manner. Okay, so that would mean they prescribe the antibiotics for a week, let's say, and then they wait a week. The endospores have a chance to germinate, then they hit it hard again with antibiotics for a week. Then new endospores might germinate, and then they hit those hard. So it's like the endospores come out of hiding, and then the antibiotics can be effective. Uh, this is not a common treatment, a common way that antibiotics are prescribed, but C. diff is so maddeningly difficult to treat that it is an approach they take. Um, with Clostridium perfringens, um, that is the, the endospores can be on food that sits out for a while and then they can germinate um, if the food is out on a counter for a long time and can lead to food poisoning that way. Bacillus anthracis, I mentioned, its endospores will live on grass or soil and then um, when so here would be the endospore on the grass or the soil and then a cow might eat it or another animal and then once it's inside the warm happy low oxygen environment inside of the cow then the vegetative cells can begin growing once it's pretty much ruined that cow and recognizes its food source is running out oftentimes by there being a higher oxygen because the animal is um, bleeding out so much then at that point, um, spores will form and the spores will end up back on the grass again and then the next cow will eat them. So historically, I believe that one of the ways that they handled this on a farm was they would have to stop using an entire field and maybe even burn it and then wait before they could bring cows back on it again. Okay, that's the end of that video. The notes are uh, in the description if you would like to follow along with your own coloring.